Welcome to Talking with the Animals, an exploration of animal communication. Join animal communicator, craniosacral therapist, and NES practitioner, Caroline Pope, as she discusses how to understand other species as they truly are, not just from the human perspective. <coughs> That's right, Mecco. Discover how communicating with our four-legged friends can open up a whole new world for both of you. And now, your host and Australia's most recognized and well-known animal communicator, Caroline Pope. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Talking with the Animals. I'm your host, Caroline Pope. Thank you for joining me. I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas and New Year period. It's always a great time of year to catch up with people. I've had lots of mail over the Christmas break, which I was very happily surprised. So thank you to everyone that wrote to me. I do appreciate it. Uh, The most common question asked seemed to be, can you please give us hints when we're learning to communicate with animals for ourselves, some of the do's and don'ts. So that's a nice, easy topic. And so here we are. One of the first things with when you want to learn to communicate with animals that often isn't talked about that much is water consumption. Now, this was particularly hard for me to learn because those of you that know me know how much of a caffeine addict I am. But because you're using your energy field, it's your electromagnetic field, the more water you drink, the easier communication becomes. So if you're dehydrated, Uh, it's 35 here today, so obviously you need to drink a little more. If you've had a lot of alcohol or particularly when you're learning, if you're hungover, not the time I'd be trying to start. Everyone works differently, but I do find for me that sadly water consumption is one of the biggest things and I've really had to learn. I think I now go through about three to four litres a day. I would have been lucky to go through a glass every second day when I started. Think of telepathics like a muscle. It's not something you've probably used much since you're a very young child, or a baby. So as Tuvok used to say, you don't get out of a wheelchair and do advanced aerobics. You're not going to get the equivalent of war and peace in your first conversation. In the same way, if I said to you, all right, we're going to learn ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, you're not going to expect to have one lesson and go in and read Tut's tomb. It just doesn't work that way. You'll get little bits, you'll get little bits. And like any skill, carpenter picking up tools for the first time, Michelangelo, the first time he picked up a paintbrush, didn't go and do the um, masterpieces. He had to build up for it. Communication is no different. So when you decide you want to start, don't work with your own animals. Sounds bizarre, I know, but it's like the doctor doesn't treat their own children. You need that detachment or a clairvoyant won't read for close friends and family, and particularly themselves, because it's so hard to know what is coming from the animal versus what is coming from you versus what you want to hear from the animal. So always start with someone else's pet. When you're starting with someone else's pet, make sure their answers that the owner can validate. So, for example, if they got the dog when it was, I don't know, three, don't ask questions about before it came to the people when they got it at three because there's absolutely no way they can validate or otherwise the information that you think you're getting. So, of course, you've got no way of knowing whether you're on the right track. Um, And always... Whatever your first impression is, that's what you say. As I've said before, the owners often said it got as far as saying, do they, does she, will he, and I've already got a yes or a no because they've, um, the animal has already read the thought, known what it is because thoughts are so much quicker than words, and I've got the answer to the question before they've even finished asking the question. So it is that split second instinctive 
Um, that's what it is. And don't worry if it sounds weird to you because just because it sounds weird to you doesn't mean one of my horses many years ago, um, his favourite foods were wagon wheels and pineapple donuts. Probably not the world's greatest food for him, but he was addicted to both. And obviously you're not going to be asking a horse what do you like and expect to hear wagon wheels or pineapple donuts. I had one dog I'll never forget was very early in the piece, kept showing me the bowl, the water bowl with red wine in it. And I couldn't understand. And in the end, I had to ask the gentleman. And uh, one of his previous dogs had had kidney problems and they were trying to get him to drink more and on hot days. So what he wound up doing was that Ribena cordial, a black currant um, syrup, he would freeze uh, that concentrate in ice cube containers and then on hot days drop one or two into the dog's water, which of course would be the colour of red wine. So hence the explanation. So don't be surprised if something appears strange to you. It's not necessarily to the animal or to the owner. Now, one of the most important things when you're starting to communicate is a really, really good on-off switch. If you don't have one, you're going to burn out, you're going to be useless, and it'll affect your health. One of the reasons I'm still working, whereas many people it started when I did are not, is because from vet nursing and because of the fact for a while I only worked distance, I'd learned to have a good on-off switch. Uh, Some people use like um, a light switch. A lot of people will then colour it gold. You know, the old-fashioned gold light switches in the early 1900s. I'll use something like that mentally and they'll visualise it and they'll flick it on before they start communicating and once they finish communicating, they'll flick it off. If you start doing that, it will give a very good strong signal to your subconscious and you won't be running. No one's motor runs 24-7 and then is strong when, when you need it most. It just doesn't work that way. And you need to have very strong, appropriate boundaries. I cannot emphasize that enough. If someone doesn't ask you, to chat with their animal, you don't chat with them. It's that simple. You do not have the right or someone says, oh, I want to check in with a pony that I sold 15 years ago. I will always say no. You sold that horse. He's no longer yours. I'm not prepared to check in. He's not yours for me to do so. Or I want to check in with my cat. I remember one lady saying, and fine, and address, oh, I don't know where he is. Well, if he's your cat, I don't work with lost pets. Some do, some don't. I choose not to. Why don't you know where he is? Oh, well, my ex took him in the divorce settlement. Well, he's actually not your cat anymore, and I'm sorry, I can't help. Think about it. Otherwise, you've got, oh, the dog down the road is always barking. Can you check in or can you tune in? Or can you do my cousin's dog or my neighbor's dog or whatever? So have those boundaries. Ask permission. If people say no, that's fine. Respect it. Move on. There will be plenty of people, I can promise you, that will be more than delighted for you to check in with their animals um, as essentially practice pets. And it you don't have to be there. We as humans... And again, this gets back to the whole species difference. We expect if I'm talking to you, I'm not going to be looking out the window. I'm going to be making eye contact with you and talking with you because as humans, that's what we expect to do. Animals are different. The horse can be off grazing in the paddock or eating his feed or the dog can be chewing on a bone and you can be having a really intense conversation. Don't expect human type behaviors from your animal just because you're communicating. Equally, pick your time. If one of the dog's favorite things is to bark at the post at 10 to 3 every day or someone's coming home from work or the kids are coming home from school, don't start three or four minutes beforehand and expect the dog to sit through it because you're going to get pretty short shrift they're going to be wanting to see the family members coming home. 
not every animal is going to want to communicate with you and that's okay. Just because you've decided you want to communicate, not all animals will feel the same at any particular time. I remember my mother's dog, Lexan, fabulous, fabulous Rhodesian Ridgeback. Um, one of mum's friends had done my um, one of my communication workshop, workshops many years ago. Hey, Karen, if you're listening. And she was over at my mother's one day and said to Lexan, do you want to um, talk with me? Lexan looked at her, said, nah, got up and walked out of the room. Don't take it personally. He was a dog of very few words anyway, so I wasn't surprised. But don't take it personally because not everybody wants to talk to everyone all the time. If you can get something validated, fabulous, but always explain to the animals too why you're communicating. If you explain to them that you're trying to learn, you may not get it right, but you appreciate the effort that they're making with you. Most of them have the patience of a saint. Truly, they do. But if not, or they go, no, nah, don't feel up to it today, got a headache, tired, whatever. No one wants to have a deep and meaningful with people all the time. It's no different. So again, don't take it personally. Thank them. Come back to it. Second and third time, do you want to talk? No, fine. Find another animal. Or they may well say, yes, happy to talk today. Now, one of the other big things for us as humans is alcohol and medications um, slash drugs. Now, alcohol, I don't recommend. Drugs, I certainly never recommend. And we're not just talking illicit drugs like cannabis, for example. That's a big no-no when you're working um, in the communication field because cannabis affects your energy body first, your physical body second. Stuff can get in. You really don't want that. Um, but And people think of, of drugs like Coke or ice or whatever, heroin, etc. But also, Panadol is a drug. If it can affect your brain so that you're not feeling pain, it's also doing other stuff. So, I mean, obviously, if it's an emergency, you've got to do what you've got to do. But otherwise, wait until the effects of the drug have worn off and drink plenty of water. If it's a practice session, I wouldn't recommend it on any painkillers or drugs. I've only had one lady once that got nothing in one of my um, workshops many years ago and I knew she was getting incredibly frustrated, so as I, to be honest, I couldn't understand why and it was, we found out later, it was the antidepressant that she was on. We're going back to the early 90s, so stuff's kind of moved a little bit since then but she found when the doctor changed her um, antidepressant medication that after that, she was able to communicate. So clearly, again, with what the drug was obviously doing, for her, that wasn't a great combination. So just keep that in mind too. It's not, um, it doesn't mean you're not going to be able to do it, but it does make it slightly harder. And keep the sessions short to start with. Um, I find my private tuitions are only an hour and a half and I warn people to drink plenty of water beforehand and they're absolutely exhausted the next day, which is why I tend to do them on a um, Friday night or a Saturday for people so they have Sunday to recover before they go back to work. You're using a muscle that you haven't used for a very long time. You're going to notice it in the same way if I went to the gym fat chance, but I can promise you I'd be paying for it for a very long time afterwards. Communication telepathics is a muscle, so you're going to get muscle soreness. I have used to start off with yes, no questions, very short, and then build up stuff gradually. And also notice, how do I feel? Was I happy, calm and relaxed when I walked in and then all of a sudden, oh my God, I'm so ex I'm getting heart palpitations, I'm nervous, oh my lower back is so sore? If that's the case, chances are you're picking up some of that from the animal. But also, if you are empathic, um, do not take it on. The old sympathise, don't empathise, note it and be rid of it. Don't take it on. Um, but also, 
be aware of how much is coming from the owner versus the animal because, of course, we are all energetically connected and most owners have very, very poor energetic boundaries with their animals. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people really struggle if I'm working on um, with craniosacral on a table and I say to them, don't look and don't speak to the dog, and that's for nearly an hour. Most owners can't do that. Uh, and I remember one gentleman, the uh, lady called me to do a cranial on her dog, went in. Um, the husband actually fell asleep in the chair. A week later, she called me and said, dog's fabulous. Can you come back and work on it again? I went, well, if the dog's fabulous, why do you want me coming to work on it? It was only a muscle strain. You got to it straight away. And she said, because my husband hasn't slept properly in months the only night he slept is when you worked on the dog and both he and the dog slept. He needs sleep, so we need you to come and work on the dog. And no, I'm not joking. Uh, I declined, obviously. Um, got him to a human craniosacral therapist and he was in a few exercises and he was much, much better. But again, that's somewhere where people are trying um, to come in or piggyback essentially on the back of a treatment to a dog. And whilst I can certainly sympathise with the gentleman because there's nothing worse than um, you know, struggling to sleep, I wasn't prepared to do that for the, um, for the dog and the gentleman can't um, keep piggybacking off his dog. He has to learn to do things and stand essentially on his own two feet and not utilise the dog's um, stuff for his own. And keep it short and sweet, as I've said, and enjoy. If you're getting frustrated, you're not getting anything, walk away. Try again tomorrow. And remember, it took me two years, two years of trying every day without fail, giving myself countless migraines. I Yes, that wasn't much fun before whatever it was clicked. And obviously in my case, as I've said before, I get it slightly differently to most people and that was pre-internet. So I was expecting things a certain way and because I wasn't getting stuff that way, I thought I wasn't getting stuff. But, you know, enjoy, have fun with it because at the end of the day, that's what it's meant to be, fun and enjoyable for you and the animals. And believe me when I say all your four-legged companion animals, whether you're actually getting anything on the day or not, they all, all appreciate the effort you're making. Thank you for listening to this episode of Talking with the Animals. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you could drop me a review, I'd really appreciate it. Feel free to message me with any topics you would like me to cover. And until next time, remember to stay safe, happy animal communication practicing, and where you can, talk with your animals. Thank you for listening to Talking with the Animals. To learn more about Caroline and the services she provides, visit caroline-pope.com. You can also find her on Facebook at Caroline Pope Animal Communicator CST and NES Therapy. Are you ready to change the way you see your world and the animals in it? Well, we know his answer. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.